got another exam question on the periodicity topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay so for part A we've got to give the formula for barium oxide and barium nitride so it all boils down to the charges of the ions. So barium oxide is made from the Ba2 plus ion and the O2 minus ion so we just need a 1 to 1 ratio of those so it's BaO. Barium nitride, got the Ba2 plus and the N3 minus ions. So to get the charges equal and opposite, we multiply this one by 3 and this one by 2, which gives the formula Ba3N2. Moving on to part B, so the first thing we've got to do is show that that many moles of barium was added to the water, so it's literally just mass over MR, and we do indeed get 8 times 10 to the minus 4. Next part, we've got to calculate the volume of hydrogen in centimetres cubed produced at room temperature and pressure, RTP. So the moles of hydrogen made will be the same as the moles of barium used from the 1 to 1 ratio. So we get the same number of moles of hydrogen as we had barium. Volume of hydrogen is therefore that many moles multiplied by 24,000 gives us the centimetres cubed value which comes out at 19.2. Next part, the concentration of the barium hydroxide formed. Well, again, we're still going to get the same number of moles of barium hydroxide formed, and its concentration will be the moles divided by the volume they're in. They're in 100 cm cubed, which is 0.1 decimeters cubed, so we get that for the concentration, 8 times 10 to the minus 3. And for the last part of B, we've just got to state the approximate pH of the barium hydroxide solution. So you can see I've gone for 12. I'll explain why in a second. But the mark scheme just said anything between 8 and 14. In other words, an alkaline pH was fine. Just quickly explain where the 12's coming from. So there's group 2. We know that group 2 hydroxide are alkaline because they contain aqueous um, hydroxide ions when they're in water. The solubility of them increases as you go down the group, and so therefore the hydroxide ion concentration will also increase. And as a result, they get more alkaline. So the 12 basically, I wanted to be you know, further away from 8, but closer to 14 essentially. Now this question's from an AS paper, so they would never ask you to calculate the pH, the actual pH of the barium hydroxide, but if it was in a full A-level paper, they could do. They'd have to tell you what temperature it was at. Um, so we're assuming, or I've assumed here, that it's at 25 degrees C. So we can bring in the KW expression. Now, if you're not in second year yet, you haven't done this, don't worry about it. Just a little bit of revision for the year 13 students out there. So KW, the ionic product of water, has a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees C and that equals to the H plus concentration multiplied by the OH minus concentration. Well, the OH minus concentration will basically be double the um, barium hydroxide concent concentration, so that's where this 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per decimeter cubes come from. So I'm rearranging this, so I've got H plus concentration as the subject, so I'll get the KW value over the OH minus concentration, that comes out at 6.25 times 10 to the minus 13. So to turn that H plus concentration into a pH, I minus log that, and we get 12.2. So my approximation of 12 was reasonably accurate. Moving on to part C, suggests why the volume of hydrogen produces slightly less using this um, sample with the same mass, but it's blackened following exposure to the air. So if you think about what they said at the start of the question, the barium does react with the nitrogen and the oxygen in the air and makes barium nitride and barium oxide, so that's obviously what's happened here. So we've therefore got less moles of barium present in this sample and therefore we'll get fewer moles of hydrogen formed and therefore a lower volume. And finally, part D, describe and explain the trend down the group in the reactivity of group two elements with water. It could be reacting with anything. So the trend is that they get more reactive as you go down the group. So we need to say something around atomic radius or shells. So they both increase. That means the shielding increases. Therefore, there's a decrease in the nuclear attraction for the outer electrons. 
Remember, when group two elements react, they are giving away their valence electrons, their two valence electrons. So we just need to qualify that by saying it's easier to remove the outer electrons, or you could talk about the ionization energy decreasing as you go down the group.